What's up everybody and thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. We are back with another episode of Bringing Sip to Home, the Exiled Lands Let's Play. We're going to jump right into this episode and I'm going to show you around the base first. So I have made some changes here. As you can see, not a whole lot outside to show you, but inside I have started the framework of what the inside is going to look like. I've also gone through and done some dyeing on the Thrall's outfits because I, well, this one I wasn't able to tell which Thrall it was when I was fighting the Sumerians in the Mounds of the Dead, so now I should be able to tell where she is pretty easily. I put the framework in for the first room, the great hallway. I did move some things in here. I've also made a whole bunch of preservation boxes so that I can keep all my food organized. You can see that there. Over here, just a little bit of changes where I took stuff out and moved it into another area. This will continue to evolve as I go. And then this area here, pretty much the same as well. I did finally place my bearer and i went and did some massive farming runs with the bearer so uh that's good i also placed an animal pen here as you can see we have a nice animal pen nothing in there currently i do have some stuff out front to keep the animal pen running really easy so making some headway on the base that's coming along we are going to grab our horse here. We're going to make sure he's got an empty inventory. I don't have the items that I need to make a different saddle right now. I know I keep getting comments to change that to a scout saddle. At some point, I'll do that, but I don't have enough alchemical base to make all the hardened leather I need. We're also going to grab our berserker. We are going to feed her some steak. I really want to focus her on getting some more vitality, so we'll do just like that. And if we look at her stats, she did get unflinching, which is some additional agility. The horse is also leveled up again and got some vitality, so that's good. Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head right over here, and I'm actually going to do the Midnight Grove Dungeon. I will learn the new religion in there as well. That way, we have that religion in our list of things that we know. And I want to know in the comment section of this video, what religion do you think I should build first? But without further ado, let's get into this episode. Okay, so we have reached the area. Now, before I go over and talk to the dude that's right over there, I am going to take out whatever is still following me here. So we'll deal with this guy. Okay, we won't deal with that guy. Let's deal with this guy. There we go. That's pretty quick. And then this one as well. Okay, he's dead. Cool. We are going to uh, chop him up. I did make star metal tools for everything. I think this is probably the best way to go for this. Go ahead and chop him up. We did get the flesh that we need to turn in. That way we can get into the place. But I want to go to this door. This is known as the Neebs gaming door. This is where the Easter egg is for Neebs. If you haven't heard that, you should definitely go check it out. But I do want to see what's in these chests. Gold, that is something that I need. So, take that with me. Okay, so we're just going to run up to this gentleman right here. There is always a scorpion behind him. And the thing is, you have to trade him some meat in order to get in there. So, there's always meat in this area to get. So, I never bring it with me. For those of you that are unsure where we're at, this is where we're at right here. You just walk up and chat with this guy. He will teach you Midnight Alchemist, so go ahead and learn that. But I'm going to purchase a potion and then use that right away. You can see it has a very short decay timer, so make sure you are ready to go when you buy it. Now, a little trick for you, you can get water right here, but make sure that you do that with a water skin. Do not press square on that, otherwise you will be teleported back out. And let's get into this dungeon. This is a fun little dungeon, I think. It is great for a lot of hides, so if you're looking for a lot of hide, this is where I suggest you go, and we are going to get as much hide as we can while we're in here. It's also a great place to get pork, so there's some boars in here, and you can just stock up on your pork.
And it really isn't that difficult of a dungeon, honestly. I think it's one of the easier ones to complete. So keep that in mind. You could probably do this with a thrall pretty early on. But let's get some epic music going. Three, two, one. Here we go. Okay, so we have reached the first boss, and you're going to see me just shred through this first guy. Now, he will drop Shade Bloom if you harvest him, so definitely harvest him. But you can see he's a three Skull Panther, 3,000 hit points. We are just going to shred him with these daggers. Just check it out. I mean, he's, he's done already. We don't even have to hit him again and uh yeah so there we go i do find that using a pick of sorts is better on them than anything else for the shade bloom so boom there we go and we got 20 shade bloom out of him now just to show you and i dropped an absolute ton of stuff in this first section let me show you what i have in this inventory i can actually take these out of there now because i did move some stuff around uh, but here we go. Look at all that hide we've got. So if you're looking for hide, this is a great place to come and get that. Additionally, look at all the pork that I have. Just a ton of pork. And I actually stopped harvesting that as well. So you could just get a ton of stuff. Now, you can choose different directions to go. So if you want to get more feline pelt, you go this direction. If you want to fight humans, you go this direction. And if you want to fight bears, you go this direction. Most of the hide that I've gotten so far is light hide. It's a uh, regular leather. The bears should drop some heavy hide. So I'm gonna go ahead and head this way. That way I get a little bit of everything. At least I think that bear pelt turns into heavy or thick leather. I'm not 100% sure now that I'm thinking of it. Uh, we will find out. It doesn't really matter which direction you go. Just pick the resource or the enemy that you wanna fight. That's all there is to it really. Bro, you're supposed to be dead. Okay, so round two of epic music. Here we go. Three, two, one. Let's go.
Okay, so we definitely had an odd moment there where it looks like the horse teleported somewhere that he wasn't supposed to be. So uh, if we just open his inventory here, look at how much health he actually lost during that period of time. He teleported up above this cave. So do keep that in mind if you're running through here with followers and you see him disappear. They may have gone somewhere they're not supposed to be. So he just went up there and got mauled by whatever was up there and took a ton of damage we are at the next section so we'll go ahead and get healed up here real quick and then we'll head in and fight whatever's in here i will need to get rid of some of the hide that i have on me again that sigil allows me to carry more when i'm injured so when i get healthy it then fills up and that uh could be a bad thing in the middle of a battle so we've got about a hundred less hit points than our fuller health bar, but I think we'll be all right. This is a gorilla, 5,600 hit points. He is going to hit pretty hard, so you do want to stay out of the way of his hits. But just stack the poison, the bleed, whatever on him. You can see it just melts through his hit points there. Oh, the berserker just got the full force, three hit full force. That... That hit right there, if you stand there and take it, will shred your health points. So make sure you get out of the way of that. And then again, Shade Bloom, go ahead and use a pick. And we should get some. I didn't actually see any pop up. We got no Shade Bloom from him. What a jerk. At any point in time, if you want to tap out or you want to go back and get some water, you can head through the other door that opens in the boss area. So if we head back this direction, this is the portal you come in and out. So you can head back over here, grab some more water. That would lead to where we fought the panther. That's going to lead to where we fought the ape. And then there's another one there. That's the next guy we're going to fight. So let's continue on from where we fought the apes, see what we want to fight next. I did also try to stop and show you that you could pick up some bear cubs in that section. So if that's something that you want, definitely go for the bears. Now, there's ape way. And then there's also, it doesn't tell you, but there's this way as well. And it should tell you somewhere, but I believe this is Sabretooth. Yeah, so there's Sabretooth there. And you can get Sabretooth kittens in here. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Let's get a couple of Sabretooth kitties. And you're dead there, bud. I don't know why she's not pulling her sword out. She's having some issues in this dungeon as well. Okay, so continuing on. I'll show you exactly where those saber tooth kitties pop up. There's two right here, so there's one. If we can grab it, we cannot. We want to do that before any damage starts because then they uh, they run pretty hardcore. But we'll uh, we'll see if we can still find them here in a moment. It's pretty dark in here, and I wish I had. A pair of like glowing daggers because the night vision it's like really bright in some areas really dark in some areas still but let's see if we could find these saber-tooth kittens and where they ran off to I don't see them down here so we'll take this guy out do want to try to not take damage while I'm wearing these uh, night vision patch. And then just look at how bright it gets all of a sudden. So it looks like we may have missed our opportunity on those kitties. I don't know exactly where they ran off to. It doesn't look like they ran off back this way. Okay, pretty well healed up here. I looked around for those saber tooth kitties, didn't see them yet. I am just going to keep my eyes peeled for them and maybe I'll see them somewhere else here. We are just shredding through whatever we come across. Can't even see this guy, just fighting a, a health bar there. 
Yeah, so in the dungeon, you really kind of have to be Johnny on the spot of being able to run up and pick them up before the battle starts because they just get lost in here and kind of never find them again. We are at the next boss. Now, this is the bull boss. And you do pretty much take damage dropping down. So I'll teach you guys a little trick real quick. If we just wait for him to get below us while I heal up, should be fine. She's down there fighting him already. And what we want to do is we want to try to just jump on his back if we can. But we also don't want to go in that area. We could probably drop... We could probably do this with our horse here since he's standing down there. If we drop right down onto the back of our horse... Yeah, it kind of worked. Alright, let's see if we can cause some damage here put some poison on him we could also just tell our berserker to come to us and that'll bring the battle back into the center ring here so 4,000 hit points you just want to make sure you don't get hit by him like that he just kind of shreds through your uh your hit points in a hurry uh, there we go we're close shouldn't last much longer 347 here we go and dead <laughs> all right so that was good i am gonna hit him with the pick as well and should get some no shade bloom from him as well wow i don't know what's going on with the shade bloom i've only gotten the 20 from the first guy which is a pretty random and we are going to be fighting looks like hyenas hyenas or wolves or wolves or hyenas or all sorts of things some sort of dog and again there's just tons of of pelt all in through here so definitely pick that up if you need bunches and bunches of pelt this is a great dungeon to come through and get that okay we are going to just run past these guys to right here because i want to fight them in the light instead of in the dark there we go and then let's fight these guys as well a couple of were hyena wolf things She hits hard, guys. She is hitting really hard. And she doesn't even have a whole lot in strength, to be totally honest with you. Yeah, hyena pelts here. We will carry as much pelt out of here as we possibly can. Okay, there we go. And this is the final battle for this dungeon. Right up here through this door. So... We will do a couple of things. One, we're going to get healed up. We're also going to give stuff to our horse. Just give me a moment to get all this situated here. Okay. We'll keep whatever else we can carry on us. All right, so we're healed all the way up. We are sated. We're going to go into this final battle. Now, this guy gets pretty wild. He goes all over the place. I'm going to try to show you exactly how to keep him sated. So, you want to be first in to attack, and then you're just going to keep him staggered as much as possible. He does hit a lot, but he doesn't hit that hard. So, if you can keep in there and just keep him on his stagger, that's the best way to do it. You can see... Stagger, 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 stagger. Just keep him staggered with daggers and really easy. Just like that. That's the way to do it. Once he starts kind of jumping around, you can move out of the way. But there you go. Final boss is dead. And there you go. There is the Jebel of the Sag right there.
So we got a bit of shade bloom there, another 14, and then we did get some flesh of remembrance. It does have about an hour and a half timer there. So we're gonna eat one and we'll try to get the rest of them into the preservation box. Something you wanna do before you leave here is go into behavior, set engagement, and say guard me because you do teleport into Sepamaru. So we will head right down here, interact with that, and we'll come out on the island in Sepamaru. Just like that, boom, and we have a lone fisherman cook there. If she comes out with attack all enemies on, she is going to start attacking this guy, and it's just not as much fun as being able to knock him out should that be somebody that you want. Oh, we got a scout right, right there. We're going to have to take him back to the base, I think. That is, uh, that's a thing we're going to have to do. So let's go ahead and grab her weapon. And we'll swap it for Seth's truncheon. I'm going to use this truncheon. And we'll go ahead and knock this guy out while we're here. No reason to leave him hanging out. Okay, so I'm going to roll over here. I'm actually going to attack her while, uh, while I can. She's going to die because I'm using the truncheon that kills if you're not tier 4. And he's going to fall through the map. Just like that. He's gone. Bye. Okay. So if that happens to you, if you have a thrall fall through the map, this is a really easy spot to do it, right? Because this is her down here dead. So what we're going to do, really easy, we're going to enter a dungeon. Okay, this is going to take me out of render range. Oh, I can't see anything in here. Okay, out of render range. I'm going to go back out. Okay, this should bring me back into render range, and he is laying right there. You can see him laying right there. So that's an easy way to do it. Just go out of render range and back into render range, and then you should see that thrall lying on the ground. Okay, we are going to head back to the base and throw this thrall on the wheel. We'll have to place it, but... I think that was a good little run. Not only did we get a ton of hide, learned a new religion, but we also get a gift thrall out the gate, which is uh, fabulous. So let's go. Okay, back at the base. And now I have to find my wheel, which I believe is in here. All the way at the bottom it is. All right, we can grab Olina and the wheel there. And then I just have to find a place where I can actually set it. I think I think it might fit right over here. Nope, really not liking me. But I should be able to place it right down here, and it should be close enough to have a decent decay timer. Let's look. It does. We'll pop him on there like that, and then throw our thrall on, and then we just need to fill it with some food. So let's look at the haul real quick. I think it was pretty good. We've got nothing but hide and fur in the horse's inventory. We had a ton of meat. And then what do we have in your inventory? It looks like I took everything out of her inventory. So I probably could have picked up even more than what I did, but I think it's a really good haul. We also learned the Jebel Sag religion, so that's super cool. You guys remember, let me know in the comment section below which religion do you think I should use first. So if you're still watching this video, thank you so much for making it through the entire episode. And if you've put a like on this video, thank you very much for that. I certainly appreciate it. I'd like to thank all my YouTube members for your continued support. Y'all are absolute legends. If you'd like to become a legend, there's a button that says join on this page. Click that for details. There's two videos on the screen, click one of those to watch next and I'll meet you over there.